This, um, this is this story's first outing, so we'll see how it goes. But this is the story of the sky falling. Now once, there was a hungry fox walking through the underbrush along a riverbank, and he saw dozing under an oak tree up ahead a fat little hen, and he thought, ooh, now there's a chicken I'd like to have for dinner. But how to get her to his lair? She was a hefty creature, and he thought, hmm. And he picked up an acorn and tossed it at her, and it popped her off the head. And she's like, what happened? What happened? And Fox whispered on the breeze, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. And then he was like, oh, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. What must I do? And Fox whispered, go tell the king. Of course I must go tell the king. And then she ran. She started running in a circle. And Fox stepped out of the underbrush and said, that way, I know a shortcut, follow me. And he took off and Hen ran after him. And as she was running, she bumped into Turkey and Turkey said, where are you going? And she said, the sky is falling. Oh, oh, said Turkey and started running with her. And they picked up other animals along the way, a, a duck and, and a cockerel. And as they were running, they scared up a pair of hares who, who jumped up and ran off in another direction and calling out the warning, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. Well, there was a whole group of them by the time they got to Fox's lair and he was standing there saying, in here, follow me, follow me. And he dove in and then stepped aside as his first victim, Turkey, came running in and Fox went out, broke his neck, threw the body aside and then came in the duck and Fox broke his neck and threw the body aside and Cockerel came in and he saw just in time what was happening. And he tried to crow a warning, cock a doodle, and Fox broke his neck. But the hen, she was still outside and she heard the cock crow and thought, oh, oh, it must be time to go lay my egg. And she trundled off home. What was I so frustrated about to sit on her nest? Now, in the meantime, those two hares had run off across the field, scaring up other animals. They scared up a, a herd of deer and a whole flock of starling and some oxen and some wild boar. Soon they had a whole stampede going, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. And Wolf, who was napping, it was a nice warm summer's day. Anyone with any sense was taking a nap. But Wolf was napping and he felt that ground underneath him shaking. And he jumped up in time to see the stampede and he just howled at the top of his lungs, stop. And everyone was so surprised they did. And he said, what is going on? And the wild boar said, the sky is falling. And the wolf looked up and it was a beautiful, bright blue sky. And he said, uh, did you actually see this? And the boar said, well, well, no, but deer told us. And the deer said, uh, uh, well, we heard it from the hares and, and all the hares said, uh, uh, well, we got it from him and pointed at one hare who had started it, who was turning a bright pink under his gray fur and saying, well, 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 I had it from the hen and, and where is she? Well, of course, she had gone home to lay her egg and, and Wolf said, so no one's actually seen this and everyone just sort of collapsed on the ground in exhaustion and felt really foolish at having been fooled like this. And as they were all sitting there and grumbling, out of the forest came a little sparrow flying as fast as she could. And she said, the, the, fire is, the, the forest is on fire, the forest is on fire, quick, come help me put it out. And Hare, who wanted to redeem himself, said, oh God, not another bird brain. And, and trying to sound uh, you know, authoritative like the wolf, he said, do you have any evidence of this? And, she said, well, you can see for yourselves the smoke. Well, down on the ground, they couldn't because of all the trees in the way. And she said, Starling, just fly up and you'll see. And Starling said, oh, I can't be bothered. I'm exhausted. There's, it's just been too much. And a lot of the animals began to slink away. So after a moment, Wolf went, you know, I smell something that could be smoke. And one of the hares popped up their ears and listened. 
and said, you know, that could be the crackle of fire. And Starling said, oh, all right, and flew up and sure enough, smoke. And Starling was like, oh no, she's right. The forest is a fire. But there were only a few of them left at this point. They did what they could. They saved a little bit, but a lot of the forest was burnt. Now, that might be a story for another time, but I feel like telling it. What happens after a forest burns is first the wood beetles, they go, ooh, Christmas. And they all swarm in and start eating that dead wood. And the woodpeckers take note and say, ooh, beetles. And they all fly in and start having a great feast. There are flower seeds in, in the soil that can only bloom after a fire. There are trees that need that fire to burn through, to take out the underbrush so they can flourish. And so within another season or two, there was green grass again, and the first saplings were coming up. And the animals who made it through, and that does not deny the hardship, but the animals that made it through feasted better than ever, because out of destruction in nature, you will always find renewal. That's my story. Okay.